Hello, Alice. You want to? Hi. Alice, you want to get the quiz or something for everyone to play while waiting? Yeah, I, I, I'm finding one. Yeah. So get get the blocket or something, Alice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. How many of you have done the quick the homework of week four? Anybody not have not done in uh, in here? <laughs> what do you think about the homework week four? Is it is it too hard? Too easy? All right, what do you think? All right, let's see if Alice be able to to get you the the quiz, all right? Why are we waiting for more to join? 39 now. All right, so this quiz is about facial expressions and it's also going to be the topic that you're going to learn. Good, good choice, Alice. Mm -hmm. All right, so now I'm going to send you guys the link in the chat and if you guys want to play, please click on the link. Um. Right, so now I'm going to start. Okay, so I'm feeling nice. So I'll let you guys uh, finish this round of blue kit and then we'll get started. So I'm just going to sit back and watch how you guys do.
Carol Stanley. Third is me, second is Young and me, yeah? And first is um, Tong. Well done, everyone. Okay, teacher, I think you can start your lesson now. Thank you very much. Good going, guys. It looked like Alice was flying through that game at least. Okay, um, so I'll get my PowerPoint presentation up and we can begin. Hey, dude, how are you? Okay. So uh, this evening we are up to lesson five and our topic will be facial expressions in public speaking, the power of facial expressions. Uh, so welcome to the class. Uh, before we get started, uh, just to remind you what we covered last week. <laughs> um, yes, I'll... Uh, I think Ms. Duke mentioned that she has already added you to the group, Jason. If not, I'll make sure you get added this evening. And Diana, I am still incredibly tired. I uh, had a great time uh, yesterday with a bunch of crazy kids. We absolutely lost our minds. It was a good time. Uh, but yeah, so last lesson, we were talking about uh, vocal modulation. Ah, beautiful. That's good, Jason. Um, so in the chat box, uh, I want you guys to send me, there were five main, yeah, there were five main aspects of vocal modulation. Just send me in which ones you can remember in the chat box. So we've got pitch, good. Pacing, volume, good. And we had another two. Tone, good. So pitch, pacing, volume, tone, uh, speed, uh, emphasis, very good. Sorry, I was wrong, there were six. What's the last one? So pitch, pacing, tone, emphasis, Volume and pauses. Very good, guys. Well done. So hopefully you were, uh, I got the chance to watch some of your uh, speeches this week. Good job. It's nice to see you guys uh, taking these concepts that we're learning on board and uh, trying to play with them a little bit and put them into your repertoire. In the long run, that's going to make you all uh, very good public speakers. So the objectives of this evening's lessons, or this evening's lesson rather, is that we're going to attempt to understand emotions and facial expressions. We're going to try to use some facial expressions. To be honest, the most common one tonight is going to be laughter. I can guarantee that because we're all going to be pulling some funny faces. But we're going to be using facial expressions to connect with our audience. And we're going to try to find some time to practice some expressive facial gestures. So we've got a few things to get through this evening. So the first thing that we want to do, this is a bit of an open uh, conversation. I'm just going to lower everyone's hand for now. Okay. Um, well, there's one person hiding there somewhere with the hand still raised. Okay. So um, the first question that I will ask this evening is why do we think 
Uh, displaying emotions on our face is an important part of effective communication. Why do we think it's important? Diana. Yeah, I think that uh, we express our um, emotion on our face can interest the audience about what we are speaking and uh, that will make uh, our audience more attractive to our speech and want, want us to, uh, to speak more. Mm, facial expression is also very important. While we uh, speak in conversations between two people or um, two in, in public speaking, um, it can express our emotion about we are boring or we are very interested or we we think about um what we think about the speech very good now one thing i'd like to point out is that quite a common facial expression i see from some of you guys on camera when we're having these lessons is this <laughs> Yeah, let, 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 let me try and do it again without the laughter. Hang on. <laughs> what sort of message do you think I might be receiving from the people I see on camera doing that? What sort of what 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 sort of messages do you think I'm receiving from people when they give me facial expressions like that? Tan, I see you're very enthusiastic to answer the question. Um, bored. <laughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Okay, so back. To <laughs> I like it when we can take what we learn and apply it to the class dynamic. This is fun. I like this. So uh, back to our question. Why is um, communicating our emotions, maybe through our, or particularly through our facial expressions, why is it important for good communication? Uh, Tom, you look like next in line. I didn't uh I don't know. I can't uh, the the almost say or everything I was supposed to say, so I don't think I have anything. It's kind of rude when the other people have your idea and when you want to talk about your idea, they said it for you. Very good. Okay, Mr. Michael, let's hear what our budding international criminal has to say on facial expressions uh yes and <clears throat> well <laughs> it basically show people what do you want from them when you have facial experience for example you did a mess on my house and i said michael do you know you did a mess in my house you know yeah <laughs> a normal people would get mad but if i go like michael you know you did a mess in my house right very next time that means like I have already have my revenge and the next thing you know, your whole house is gone. So yeah. It's <laughs> I would not have expected anything less uh, in, in an answer from you. Thank you, Michael. Very good. Uh, yes, you can use your facial expressions to let the people know that you're going to make a mess in their house. Very good, Michael. Very good. Uh, <laughs> okay so whew, back in the room i'm back in the room this, this is what happens when i get very sleep deprived i just lose my mind so i apologize guys um so one thing i would like to point out now before i forget it is that with our facial expressions um yeah so with our facial expressions we, um, as public speakers, strictly as public speakers, I'm talking about, uh, although it can have good application with one-on-one -on -one conversations too. But 
some of these, uh, as we're going to learn, some of these facial expressions are born from uh, what we call micro expressions. And it's something that we don't mean to do. It's something that we can't help, something that we can't stop. Uh, but we can attempt through training to try to control them, uh, particularly in public speaking environments. So sometimes we might be feeling a certain way, but we need to convey a different emotion. So, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe you fell over and injured your ankle while you're at home in the morning, but you've still got to go and tan. That's not funny. That can be very painful. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, so let's say, for example, you fall over at home and you sprain your ankle. It can be quite painful, uh, but you've still got to go later and do a public speech that day. So you've got that job to do. You have to go and do it. So through training, it's very important to try and attempt to control those facial expressions so that when you deliver that speech, you can put in the emotion that you want to put into the speech. Because if I'm trying to give a speech to inspire a group of people, the last thing I want to be doing is like standing there and going, oh, mm, this ankle, and trying to hide that pain expression on my face. So yes, through training, uh, and a lot of practice, we can attempt to, <laughs> Victoria would go to that speech with her face looking like a squash, my goodness. It would make for a very interesting debate argument, Victoria, I will say that. Okay, so what I'd like to do now is just introduce you to uh, the uh, a little bit of basic theory on uh, public, uh, public speaking, a little bit of basic theory on uh, facial expressions. So let me try and set this up. Goodness gracious, I've got that many pop-ups going on. I don't know what's happening. Ah. Sorry, guys, this, this is what happens when you get old and you have to use technology for work. You just get confused and scared. You're <laughs> trying to change the size of a window and I end up minimizing it. Okay, so um, the first thing that I want to cover is that uh, for a long time in recorded psychology, uh, there were seven, what I'm going to call the seven established universal facial expressions. So I added the word established, but without that, let's look at universal. So that means that everybody on the planet will exhibit the same seven uh, facial expressions to, uh, to let people to communicate that they're feeling these seven emotions. Now th those seven, they've been documented to be the same unless we're talking about like psychopaths or like 0.01% of the population. Um, but according to a study that was conducted in the year 2020, it was actually discovered that humans could have as many as 16 universal facial expressions. And I've got those listed here for you. Uh, so those 16 are amusement, anger, or concentration, whatever it is that Tan's doing, confusion, contempt, <laughs> contentment, desire, disappointment, doubt, elation, interest, pain, sadness, surprise, and triumph. So those are, so I'll leave it up to you guys to do research into those emotions and how the face would display them. But tonight I'm going to be focusing on the, the core seven established universal facial expressions. So I managed to find these brilliant little GIFs. Uh, so moving pictures, they're going to point out all of the facial cues 
that happen within these seven emotions. So we're going to start with number one, which is surprise. So let me try and make that a little bit bigger. Now, obviously, these are being performed by actors, so some of them might be overdone or underdone a little bit, but they still point out all of the main uh, important facial uh, facial contortions, one might say. So as you see here, the picture's just going to continue to uh, cycle through them, but you can read them off this list here. So for surprise, the first of all, the eyebrows will be raised and curved. So you see here amongst all of these uh, facial models, you see the eyebrows are slightly raised and curved to a different degree or another amongst them all. Um, we'll notice that the skin below the brow, so just below the forehead here, uh, we'll see the skin there uh, gets a little bit stretched out. Rather just up here, we're not talking about the wrinkles just yet. Uh, so next, however, now we are, the horizontal wrinkles will show across the forehead. So I think this also kind of plays into how old these models are because this first girl here has got absolutely no wrinkles. This guy is starting to get some. And this chick on the end here is just all wrinkles. But we see there right at the top of the forehead, the brow is stretched and the, skin, and the forehead uh, just above the eyebrows is wrinkled. Uh, we, see that the, <clears throat> we see that the eyelids are opened so that the whites of the eyes are being displayed. And we see that the jaw drops open and the teeth are parted, but there is no tension or stretching of the mouth. So they're not going like trying to open it as possible. It just kind of just, just hangs open. So these are the indicators of surprise. Uh, and yeah, so these are, so yeah, so whenever you see someone looking at you like this, they're surprised about something. You've managed to shock them in some way. Okay. Uh, yes, Tom. Uh, can you remind me back? I kind of forgot. <laughs> well, they're all listed here. Um, but to be honest, um, I was doing a bit of research on the internet and I managed to uh, I managed to find these. So let me show you the website that you can go back and read. It might have been this one. No, it was not that one. Science of people. So you see there, the models are all up there. I just had to read through this and uh, learned a bit about this, uh, learned a little bit about it. It's quite interesting, actually. Um, so I will copy and paste that link into the chat. Ooh, but I think that the very memory of a very good expression where it doesn't happen long ago have been long ago but it still is quite cool to think about it very it's good kind of, it's kind of morning and my friends still in the campsite i said i have to go wake up wake up he does not go but the campsite each each camp have a a uh, big lazy horns to call the leader when there was a problem in the camp. Uh, then I stick in the horn right beside my friend's ears and blast it. And then he jumped, he jumped up and said, What is it? What is it? And then when I said, Wake up, lazy, the expression on his face, it was, it was so satisfying that the whole camp laughed. <laughs> oh goodness okay um so let's get on to our second emotion now our second emotion is fear so this is what someone would display if they were scared of you so this is basically how i look at michael all the time so i'm scared he's gonna nuke my house or something 
<laughs> so the first thing that we'll notice is that the eyebrows are drawn together. They're raised. They come slightly inwards and they're a lot flatter than normal. So I think this girl on the left here just has naturally very curved eyebrows, but we see the guy in the middle and the girl on the end, their eyebrows are a lot flatter than they were for surprise. For surprise, they were almost like the McDonald's M, but for fear, they're a lot flatter. Uh, we'll notice that the wrinkles on the forehead are in the center. They're more between the eyebrows and not all the way across. Uh, the upper eyelid is raised, but the lower eyelid is tensed and drawn up. So if I zoom in here, we can see the upper eyelid is more open, but the lower eyelid is slightly raised and more tense. Uh, the eyes have the upper of the whites showing, but not the lower of the whites. So that there as well, you see the same on all three models with the, the eyelids, how the bottom ones are tense, the top ones are loose. That enables us to see the tops of the whites, but not the bottom of the whites of the eyes. And finally, the mouth is open and the lips are slightly tensed or they're stretched and drawn back. So they're not, it's not hanging open like, uh, like the face of, uh, of surprise. It's not like, it's slightly more like, where it's like more pursed or it's more tensed, sorry. So that is the emotion of fear. Number three, we move into disgust. <laughs> okay, so the first thing we'll notice is that the eyes are more narrowed. So you can't really see the whites of the eyes above or below the pupil. So they're quite they're quite more closed off than normal. The upper lip is raised, so you can see their teeth. So the upper teeth may be exposed. The nose is like pursed and wrinkled up like that. It's not just sitting normal. And the cheeks are raised. So we don't, our cheeks don't just sit naturally on our face. They're, they're kind of raised up a little bit. And that is the face of disgust. We'll go into our next emotion, which is anger. So as we go into anger, we'll notice that the eyebrows are lowered and drawn together. So much like disgust, you can kind of see the wrinkles near the eyebrows there, excuse me but the eyebrows are lowered and closer to the eyes. Now, again, I, I know we're going through this uh, rather quickly, but this is more designed to be an introduction for you. And if it's something you're interested in pursuing, then you can look for the resources and uh, do the study to learn more. Uh, so again, mentioning the, uh, the vertical lines between the eyebrows, the lips are tense, particularly the lower lip. So we see there, it looks quite tight. You can't really see uh, any of the teeth. So the eyes, we see we actually get a couple of different uh, eye expressions here. So number one, uh, the eyes are in quite an intense stare. So this guy looks almost like he's looking like right into your soul. Like I know what you're thinking. <laughs> Whereas if we see here, this lady's eyes are slightly wider, almost like they're slightly bulging. And some other people can actually take that, uh, take that facial expression with the bulging eyes even further, where it's, let, let, let me see if I can do this. I know I'm going to look ridiculous, but almost like more like, like where the eyes kind of start bulging out of the head. It almost looks like the eyes are just going to go, ah, jump out. Uh, <laughs> 
I definitely think this is my favorite lesson I've taught in this course so far, for sure. Um, the lips can be firmly pressed together. Uh, and we'll see here, um, these lips look quite square. So there's no angle to them. There's no pinching on any sides or anything. It's just very, just, just flat lips. However, we can also, actually this girl here, there's slightly more shape to her lips, but they can also angle slightly down like they look displeased as well. <laughs> Tan, that comment concerns me. Why can you smell me? No, Stella, that man in those photographs is not me. Oh, bless. Um, so I'll go back over the, the, the fear face uh, again shortly. So, <laughs> the, <laughs> so the nostrils may be dilated. Um, I can't believe I'm going to do this on camera. But dilated means they, uh, they're more open than normal. So this is just me doing this because it's something that I can do. But... Uh, the nostrils, when they flare, it's kind of like when they get bigger. When people get angry, sometimes their nostrils will <laughs> Oh, <laughs> And I told you we'd be laughing a lot tonight. Uh, and as well, the last symptom of the anger facial expression is the lower jaw juts out. So basically that means it just kind of slightly protrudes a bit more. So rather than just being like this, it can kind of, it can be like, it can be a bit like, it can come forward a bit more and protrude. That's what it means to jut out. So yeah, that is the, <laughs> they are the example of angry face. Uh, we move on to an emotion I hope we all feel. Uh, more often than not, is happiness. So <laughs> if we have a look at the face of happiness, the first thing we notice is the big smile. So the corners of the lips are drawn back to make the smile wider and up to actually indicate the smile. So that's why when we draw, like even if it's just like a cartoon or just like a stick figure smiley face, it's always a big, line or a big u-shaped line like that because that's the the cartoon equivalent of the lips being drawn back and up to create that smile uh if you're particularly happy maybe even on the verge of laughter uh the mouth may or may not be parted um and the teeth may be exposed so we see there uh the this first face i think is kind of like this is what we want you to do to smile. And I think the guy taking the photos might have just said something funny and they actually smiled. That's what I think the difference is there. Um, the cheeks lift, or rather, so let's go on to the next one. Uh, the wrinkle tends to run from the, outer, uh, from the outer nose to the outer lip. So we see there, it's particularly deep uh, on this first lady's uh, face. Ah, what did I do? Why did it? There we go. Oh, I don't even need to close it off. Sweet. So yeah, we can see there, um, those lines there from the outer nose to the outer mouth. Um, and just a little bit, just a little tidbit of trivia for you. Um, in England, at least, it's uh, the, the only people I've ever heard refer to this uh, are British people, uh, but it may be slang in other countries as well, but they actually call these monkey lines. So when you've got a big smile on your face, uh, my auntie always used to say, e, I can see your monkey lines. And that means that she could, she could tell that I was smiling or she told me that she could see I was smiling. Um, the cheeks are raised. So obviously uh, part of the muscular control of the face to change the shape of the lips, we need to move the muscles of the cheek. So try and smile without moving your cheeks, you can't do it. So we actually move our cheeks to create the smile. Uh, the lower eyelids, uh, they may show wrinkles 
or they may become tense. So we see in this particularly big smile from this first lady, she's just got the best smile in the photo. So I'm just using her example. We see the under eye there has become a little bit wrinkled from the smile. As the cheeks have lifted, it's closed the space there, creating the wrinkles. Or the other option is uh, this lady on the end here. We can see there that there's pretty much a big lack of a wrinkle there. So it's quite, quite tense uh, in that example. And uh, lastly, but not leastly, terrible grammar, but I like it, I'm sticking to it. Uh, you might be able to see uh, crow in this gentleman here, you can see the crow's feet. So when the eyes start to squint slightly uh, or when that space is closed up, you can see the wrinkles forming there. They're called crow's feet because there's three of them. I was gonna, I was gonna point on the screen, but I realized you can't see my hands. So there's the first one there in the middle one. There's one that slightly goes upwards from it. And then there's one that goes slightly downwards from it. So we see those three lines, they're called crow's feet. And they're a general sign that someone's uh, either maybe squinting in the dark or if they're happy, uh, that's part of a happy face. Uh, we're going to get ready to get sad now, guys. <laughs> uh, Alice has just said the first lady at the bottom gives her goosebumps. Uh, good question, Stella. Um, I imagine uh, I imagine that uh, a lot of animals do feel those emotions, uh, but I'm not sure how expressive, or I'm not sure how they would express those emotions because their facial structures tend to be so different, so the muscles work differently. Uh, but that could be a very interesting question to do some personal research. The girl on the left is too happy. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she's a friend of Michael's and he just told her about his plan to nuke somewhere. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, nope, went one too far. Okay, goodness gracious. This is... Um... Oh, it appears that I have not uh, downloaded this in the form of a GIF. Dang it. Okay, so... Um... We've only got two emotions left to go here. The next one is sadness. So the first thing that we'll notice is that the inner corners of the eyebrows, this guy almost looks like he's asking for a kiss. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> but we, So we see here the inner corners of the eyebrows are drawn in and up. So we can see like a slight wrinkle in the forehead there which uh, means that there's something going on with the eyebrow. So we see they're considerably closer to the, to the bridge of the nose and they're slightly curved upwards. So this one here kind of has a dip before it starts to go up. And likewise, it has a bit of a dip before it goes up. Uh, the skin below the eyebrows is triangulated with the inner corner up. So what that means is that we see underneath the eyebrow here, from the eyebrow to uh, from the edge of the eyebrow to the edge of the eyelash forms a straight line and then up into the triangle and finish the triangle off there. And then same on the other side here, We've got the point of the triangle leading out to the bottom corner. It goes up and then goes back in almost like a triangle. Uh, we see there with the frown, the corners of the lips are drawn downwards, so I can't do it. It's like I'm literally trying to do that mouth, but the, the edges of the mouth go down. <laughs> uh, the jaw is slightly lifted as well. So it's uh, so this the space between the, the, the teeth gets a bit closer, so it's a bit like that. So you can see. Just that almost creates the frown for me. So teeth slightly apart, teeth together. So we see there that slightly changes the shape of the mouth. And as well, the lower lip pouts out. And that's where I think this dude right here, whoop, 
That's where I think this dude right here is going to be the best example of that. Look at that pout. Look at that pout. Okay. We have one last emotion. I do not think that bloke looks like me at all, Sonny. I do not. <laughs> I do not think that guy looks like me at all. Um, and our last emotion is contempt or hatred. So this is when you really, like this is when you hate something and it kind of goes beyond that point of feeling that anger towards it, that hate. If you see here, the one cue for it is you see the mouth is not straight. It can, one side of it has angled upwards. So you see almost like, let me annotate this for a second. Line. So the mouth, uh, if, if the mouth being in a straight line should go across the face like that, for the emotion of contempt, we see it has a slight upwards angle. That's because around here, one cheek has tensed to lift that side of the mouth. Oh, I did not want to save that. I wanted to clear that. Okay, so those are our seven uh, base uh, facial expressions or our universal facial expressions. I'm going to zoom out of that now. That's slightly terrifying. Um, but I'll go back to fear because I had someone request that. So uh, just with fear, the eyebrows are raised and drawn together. So we see there the raised eyebrows. Uh, we see the wrinkles on the forehead across here. Uh, and they're in the center of the forehead or they're, they're most prominent in the center of the forehead. So we see as it goes out, they get less and less and less. Uh, the upper eyelids we can see are better example here. So the upper eyelid is raised. So we can see the whites above the eyes. I'm just gonna get in there. It's kind of terrifying to look at, isn't it? So we see there, we can see that space of white in the eyes in the, at the top, but we see the lower eyelid is drawn up. So we cannot see the whites below the pupil. Uh, and we can see the mouth, <laughs> the mouth is slightly open. And the lips look slightly tensed or stretched and drawn back. Okay, so that is so that those are the seven universal uh, facial expressions that everybody experiences. So <laughs> now is where it's going to get funny. Now's where it's going to get a bit fun. Uh, so everyone put your hands down now, just for a moment. <laughs> okay, so. We're going to do a bit of an interactive challenge. So I'm going to give you an emotion. Uh, You're going to display it into the camera. And I'm going to, and we're all going to, and we're all going to say if we think you have tried to mimic that emotion well. So put your hands up if you would like to take part in this challenge. Oh, Luna's, Luna's jumped straight to it. Luna and her Kung Fu master. What? Your background. There's an old that's, dude with a long, old dude a with a long beard. Not a Kung Fu master. Uh, okay, so Luna, your emotion, let's go with surprise. How would you pull a surprised face? 
<laughs> Very good. Very good. Okay, Michael, I cannot wait to see this. Hey, what? Show me, and actually I will, I will do the nice thing. Show me. Disgust. Oh. <laughs> you show again. Uh. Uh. Mm. Not bad, not bad. Okay, uh, next in line, Victoria. Can you please show me? Victoria. Uh, the yes. Victoria that I have requested to unmute. Oh. So, uh, can you please show me anger? Oh, Let's see you look uh, angry. Uh, Let's I see you look angry. It's okay. Gotcha. <laughs> wow. Very good. Okay, yeah. I turned into judging. Very good. Stop. You're almost there. You're almost there. You kind of look. <laughs> you kind of look like a. You kind of look like the rock trying to be angry with that raised eyebrow. <laughs> Very good. Okay, uh, next we have Kevin. Can you please show me sadness? Oh. oh. Oh, oh, sh. I see the lip going there. Good job. Good job. Good try, Kevin. Good try. Uh, I'll ask Ruby next. Can you please demonstrate? Oh, I'll give you contempt. Can you demonstrate contempt for me, please? So we need to see your mouth for this one. You look like you don't like me, Ruby. Well done. Well done. Okay. Um, so we've done surprise, we've done disgust. All right. Um, can I please have Lily? Hello, Lily. Hello, teacher. Can you please show me a face of fear? How would you look if you were scared? Mm. So you've you've got your list of cues just here if you need to have a read of them. Yeah, I'm reading. Mm. I'm actually not really good at acting fierce because I normally don't usually have this that's facial expression. Good. Well, that's good that you're not scared of much. Yeah. But <laughs> I have to say this, and I'm only teasing. I'm not being serious. But when you tried to pull that face of fear, you just kind of looked like you smelt a bad smell. Yeah, like that. You look like you're sitting next to something that stinks. <laughs> but thank you for your try lily very good okay so we could be here all night doing this so i'm going to turn this into an additional homework task uh goodness this is going to be a fun week for homework <laughs> So yes, yeah, so this challenge here, or this, this activity, we're going to make it part of the homework. So connecting with your audience. <laughs> so facial expressions are contagious, or emotions are contagious when they're visible, I should say. That's a better way to put it. So have you ever seen maybe 
uh, one of your friends got some bad news and they're looking sad, maybe they're about to cry and all of a sudden you look at them and they you start to feel really bad for them and maybe even a little sad yourself. Has that, has that happened to many of you? <laughs> so yeah, so being able to a bit of being able to visualize your emotions uh, is a very good way of almost transferring your emotions. So to put this with public speaking, uh, if you're talking about a serious topic that people need to pay attention to, it would be written on your face, like a, a strong sense of, I suppose, discernment, like looking very serious and people would be got to listen or have you ever noticed how, if you've ever watched stand-up comedy, maybe, um, when the when the comedians are telling jokes, some of them are pulling, they've got smiles on their faces or they're pulling slightly funny looking faces. And that in itself can add to the comedy of it. And actually a comedian, I recommend you check out for this. I'm going to write this down. Check out Rowan Atkinson. He is absolutely brilliant. Like um, I once saw an interview where he said the name Bob and he had a whole room full of people laughing because of the facial expressions that he used. It's just brilliant what you can do with this stuff. Um, but yeah, so stand-up comedians will um, stand-up comedians will use their faces to make the jokes funnier. Um, I suppose professional combat athletes, professional wrestlers, uh, when they are having an interview in the ring and they're trying to hype the audience up for their next big match, they'll get that look on their face like, I'm going to do it. We're going to kick his butt. And everyone's going, yeah. And they're getting everybody into the emotion of it. Yeah, Tom gets it. <laughs> But yeah, so really using your facial expressions can just add a whole a whole extra depth of emotion to your speech. So if you can learn to control this stuff, um, yeah, so if you can learn to control your facial expressions to display the emotion you want to display, you really can have an entire audience eating out of the palm of your hand with a speech. Uh, so yeah, um, hopefully this is something you guys will look into and study a little bit. Uh, most of this stuff you can find in the body language interpretation books. Uh, there are also books, I think, on emotions and facial expressions specifically too. Um, we're not able to, I should have taken this one out because we're not able to show videos uh, in the lesson for copyright reasons. Uh, but I think my descriptive examples painted the picture well enough. <laughs> Michael, I take it that you meant that airline food comment uh, about uh, about Lily's uh, fear face. Okay, so. So, uh, gen so, and as well, so adding the next layer to facial expressions, we want to try and make them look and feel as genuine as possible. So, uh, so you can see now, I'm just thinking about some of the silly things we've talked about and done tonight. And you can see my smile, it lights up my whole face. I feel like my eyes are involved, my mouth, my cheeks, everything is involved. But if I... I'm going to try and reset this, but now all I want to do is laugh. So if I re try and reset my face and I'm just going to try and smile and make it look, don't make me laugh, guys. It's making this hard. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not going to be able to do it. But um, if I just try and smile, you can see here, yeah, the cheeks have gone up. Yeah, the shape of the mouth has changed. But there's nothing in the eyes. There's no, like the, the eyes and the rest of the face haven't lit up with it. So you, it's very easy to tell when a facial expression is real and genuine or whether it's just forced and fake. So hopefully when we are trying to convey these emotions, we're also trying to 
<laughs> no, don't make me laugh. <laughs> oh, you guys are shocking. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so hopefully when you're trying to convey these emotions to your audience and make them feel it, they need to feel, or they will feel it when you feel it as well. So <laughs> what is that face, Sonny? What is that face? <laughs> okay. So, and, and so the important or the, the most important reason, so the most important reason behind uh, making your emotions genuine or your facial expressions genuine is that you want to build a sense of trust with the audience. So again, if I was sitting here and I'm going to try and not smile again. So if I'm just sitting here and explaining to you, okay, so like we're going to be happy now and we you know everybody's going to feel good and we're, we're going to be happy. And most of you are going to look at me and go, dude, this guy's a serial killer. Look at that face. But now I'm going to try. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. I love that uh, that picture that Linda Ann just sent. Thank you. I needed that. Oh, my goodness. Uh, ho hopefully you guys can see this picture on the screen of this crazy cat. <laughs> Who sent it to you? Who sent it? Hello, Yuki. But, yeah, so, all right. But, yes, so now if I'm sitting here and talking to you, okay, you know, like, we're going to feel happy, like, we're going to talk about something that makes us feel good. If you can see that smile on my face, that smile or that laughter from me is genuine. You're going to, you're going to feel that sense of trust with me more. You're going to trust me more and you're going to go along for the ride. You're going to be happy. You're going to laugh. You're going to smile. So do we, do we see that difference? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, I have never tried to take a photo of my friend's face while he's picking his nose. Although I have had a few students in some of my classes maybe forget they're on camera and they'd be sitting there like, like that. Don't worry, I'm only faking it. It's outside my nose. But they'll sit there like that, just digging around for some nose gold. And I'll have to send them a private message and go, get your finger out of your nose. You're on camera. And all of a sudden, I just see like this. No. And then the camera turns off for a second. I'm like, please tell me they're not about to eat that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so, but yeah, see, you know, like, and as well, like, while I'm talking about this, you see my smile's genuine. You see, like, my face is happy. So you guys are coming along and laughing with it. So that's the transference of emotion. That's the thing about genuine expressions, and that's building trust with your audience. <laughs> but I'm not even going to respond to that, Tom. I think everybody in this class is too young to be one. Mm, no, sir. Okay. <laughs> I'm kind of terrified to start opening these attachments now, guys. Okay, so. Um, this practicing expressive gestures activity. Um, uh, to be honest, right now, I don't think I could do any other facial expression but smile and laugh. Uh, <laughs> so um, this is going to be part of your homework. Um, I'll make sure that I send you guys that list of um, facial cues for the seven universal facial expressions. And that's going to be an additional homework task for you guys. Oh, no. No. Yeah. Okay. Not living things. Not being. Not living and being. Tom, I'm going to give you a chance here, but let's hope this joke is funny. Living. Knock, knock. Who's there? Oh, I. Hawaii? Hawaii. 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 Hawaii who? I'll find the game you now, please. Now, can you let me inside, please? It's waiting outside. Wait, what? 
Luna Noel. <laughs> I didn't hear the punchline because you're like, blah, 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 blah. you said it way <laughs> too fast. Who was talking? Mark? Tom. Tom. Oh, goodness. Yeah. I don't know why you're muted, Tom. <laughs> no, Victoria, the homework is not going to be smiling and laughing. The homework is going to be displaying a large variety of facial expressions. Okay, um, I'll unmute you guys and we can, we can maybe tell a few jokes after class. <laughs> okay so we'll also um we'll also skip this bit because i had an absolute nightmare with trying to manage uh breakout rooms in a session earlier today a lot of um a lot of students here can testify to that where we'd be sent to one room bounce back out go back in uh so yeah we'll we'll, we'll skip that bit um, but let's, uh, let's have a discussion. We're going to share some experiences. So who here has ever maybe consciously thought about their facial expressions or who has had experience maybe in reading other people's facial expressions? Yeah, just, just tell us about an experience that you've had. Um, Oh, goodness. Uh, Jason, have you had an experience with uh, facial expressions? You're a debater, so I imagine you would have. Yes, I do. I do have uh, some, some ex uh, facial expressions whenever I debate. Whenever I get, you know, really, really uh, intense, I do like <laughs> uh, really, uh, you know, uh, angry about you know something like arguments yeah and when debate when we are in some like not tense topic then I just like oh you know this blah 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 and then and then I say yeah continue with my topic you know facial experience sometimes it could be a bit sad and I'd be like still a normal face like I'm just zooming out my face so that my opponents can be scared. Like, oh no, I'm so scared. I don't know what to do. This guy is so strong. And then he gives all of his <laughs> facial experience. I think the judges will like him more than us. Very good. Thank you, Jason. <laughs> whoever, whoever sent me that picture, Sonny, of the, the cat pretending to be the mosquito. Well done. You broke me. Um, Ben from Vung Tao, do you have any uh, experience or do you have any experiences with uh, facial expressions? Yeah. Can you ask again? Uh, do you have any experience with uh, reading facial expressions or have you ever paid attention to your own facial expressions? Uh, sometimes I, and the weekends, I do silly faces to uh, make my jokes for my parents. Uh, in the village, um, um, every children treat me like I'm a clown, so I have too much attention to my facial expression. Very good. Very good. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Victoria. Have you fallen off your chair again? Okay, let's try someone else. Um, Ah, Andrew. Hello, Andrew. Have you had any facial, uh, any experience with yes, facial here. expressions? I just go on to the restroom. Sorry. Ah, no worries. 
my experience with facial expressions just seems to be laughing all the time. Um, but yeah, so Victoria, tell us about your experience with uh, managing facial expressions. Have you ever had to have you ever had to try to control your facial expressions while you were uh, debating? Yes. So tell uh, tell us a bit about that. Okay, then let's move on. Let's move back to Andrew then. Tell us about some of your experiences, Andrew. Yeah, so my biggest experience is when I got to talk to the people, I felt scared, but I try not to, I not, try not to show that scared expression to the audience. I try to be calm I try to be grounded and try to be happy. So no one will notice that I am scared. So that's my experience. But later on, I have fixed that thing. And now I'm not scared anymore. And I do not have to hide that expression. Very good. So while you were feeling that fear, you just managed it and tried to control your face. And now you don't feel it anymore because you've got that confidence. Very good. Hey guys, I think Luna discovered a 17th universal facial expression for snacking. <laughs> okay, Tom from Vung Tao. Tell us some of your experiences, please. Yes, there was a time when um, the class, before class, the class, we to have a pretty good trick on the teacher when she turned her head back to the board. We have some small airplane and we, and then she was turned back. What was that? And we have to keep a straight face like this. <laughs> okay. so it wasn't okay. me, teacher. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yes, and then in the more than 10 small airplanes in her hair, and then mm. notice as she put in this. And the classes, in the classes, you still have to keep a straight face when she says, What is this? Who did it? The, the classes. <laughs> I was trying to keep a very straight face, but some of the Classmate doesn't have it, and it just keep. <laughs> and then the teacher said, "So you got and the, the one who was um, um, who was very trying very hard to not to laugh." And then and the teacher says, "So you are the one who throw. You free, come with me." And they haven't even thrown the plain paper. The one. The one were me and my friend. They after the teacher leave the class, the class explode into a a big lap for all. Oh, uh, it's kind I'm of a, to let it go. Very good. Well, thank you very much for sharing that, Tom. <laughs> I was going to say my closest experience to anything like that was when we had this psycho kid in class, and he just threw a chair at the teacher. Yeah, I went to a very crazy school. Um, but yeah, so let's, uh, <laughs> let's discuss the impact of facial expressions. So who can tell me uh, the importance of controlling their facial expressions during a public speech? Stella. There you are. Um, I forgot the question again. <laughs> Can you tell me the importance of managing your facial expressions during a public speech? 
So in a public speaking, when there is something like wrong with me, I remember a time when I am in a not a in a kindergarten because I'm still very small. We have a public club that my mom made me join, and then one a time when we are talking, like I got caught up, and then like I prepared that a lot. I prepare a lot of work for my that public speaking, but then I completely forgot almost everything I remember. And like I keep saying things, but then like I make a face that I, I like I make the face that I still smile. I didn't make a face, oh no, I'm gonna lose, oh no, I'm gonna forget, oh no, what could I do? Even though I think it in my mind, I try to look okay, but my uh, my teacher said that, are you okay? I said, yeah, I'm perfectly okay. And then my teacher said, oh, I'm sorry, wrong man. You don't need to speak that. And I make a few, and I think I'm lucky for it. I think that only. <laughs> well, Stella actually raises a very good point there with what she just said. So if you do get nervous and you forget what you've got to say, uh, sometimes like the worst thing you can do is let that show on your face. So if it's like, uh, uh, people are going to think, oh my God, he's about to wet his pants. But if you can control your face and just make it look like you're looking at the audience, perhaps just in a deep thought, if you can make it look like it's deliberate then a lot of the time they won't even know anything's wrong. Um, goodness gracious. That was a that was a big fish hook there, Tom. Okay, so um, so that's a good reason why facial expressions are important uh, in public speech. Where are we here? Alice, what's a reason that you can think of that uh, facial expressions are important? Well, I think it shows how we like feelings. Very good. And our confidence. Very good. Yeah, that's all I could think of. No worries. So it can, it, we, if we can control them, we can look confident. Very good. Hello, Mina, how are you? <laughs> Hello, Mina, how are you? That was a very good shocked face you just pulled then. Yeah, that's how. So can you tell me why you think uh, facial expressions are important for public speech? I think because if we're kind of nervous and we try to put on a confident face and the audience will actually think that so it's kind of just make others think what are you not actually was feeling hey mina your face still gives everything away wait what your face gave it away um <laughs> Uh, Victoria from Na Trang. Hey. <laughs> uh, can you, you please? At, sir? Uh, because you're sitting there raising your eyebrow and pulling funny faces. Um, so, can you tell us why you think facial expressions are important in public speech? Uh, well, apart from everything else that everyone else said, I think it's also useful for, um, like, not showing your thoughts. For example, uh, I once, uh, I, I used to be in the debate team, and <clears throat> in my mind, I was like, oh, bananas, how am I going to, like, even stay sane after this and the other team their expression is just like you know like um 
it's stones and glass. There's like absolutely nothing lively about it. And I think they're doing it on purpose. So we sort of go nuts because we think they're like planning something like so darn evil. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can definitely relate to that. And they look like really terrifying for some sort of reason. So expression, in my opinion, is is like really important in like a bunch of ways, and it's uh, important for a bunch of situations. Apart from that, like everything else was said by everyone else before me, so I'm sad. Well, thank you for your contribution. Continue, continue doing those faces. They're good. Um, so a point that I would like to bring up as to why facial expressions are important uh, is that it helps us to convey the emotion of the speech that we're giving. Now, by way of answering in the chat box, who can tell me one important thing about the facial expressions that you need or so something that the facial expressions need to be in order to uh, in order for the audience to feel what you're feeling or in order for the audience to feel how you want them to feel hint is it starts with the letter g by way of the chat box. Yes, Tom, your facial expressions need to be gross. Well done. <laughs> no, they do not. Nope, not gestures, not grumpy, not gross. What is one attribute of your facial expressions uh, that helps you to convey that emotion to the audience? Starts with the letter G. Well, they need to be great, yes, but that's not the one I had in mind. Oh, I meant to send that to everybody, not Tina. Send it in the chat box, guys. Very good, Victoria. Genuine. They need to be genuine. Genuine. So they need to. So genuine means real. So they need to be real. But in public speech, they need to be real to the audience. So again, so just, just going back to my smiling example, if I'm sitting here and saying, like, I'm so happy we've been having such a good time. You've all been making me laugh so much. You know, my eyes, there's nothing happening. It's all down here. It doesn't look real. But now someone make me laugh. So, someone make me laugh. It should be very, exactly. It, it looks creepy. It doesn't look real. <laughs> See, when, when, I can't even say it, but see when it's genuine, like it, it happens up here around my eyes as well, happens in my cheeks and in my mouth, in my whole face. <laughs> but yeah, so you see, you see when the emotion is, it, when the emotion is genuine, 
a new one, it lights up the whole face or it affects the whole face, not just, oh, I, sh I, I should be looking sad. So I'm going to, my lip and I'm going to here. It doesn't look real. So uh, yeah, you need to make your emotions look genuine. Uh, <laughs> why does the dog have such big muscles? Anyway, but the the emotions need to look genuine to be able to transfer because what were the comments I got when I was just doing the fake smile? It looks weird. It looks gross. Like you're not going to believe it. So you need to find a way to <laughs> emotional language is ripped. But yeah, so um, yeah, you need to find a way to be able to make those facial expressions look genuine if you want to transfer that emotion from yourself to your audience. And that is important because why? What does that build in your audience? Starts with the letter T this time. A connection, yes. But more importantly, what do we need to have in order to build a connection with somebody? It starts with the letter T. Nope, we do not need technology. We do not need tactical IQ strategy. We need trust. Well done, Lindan. We need to build trust with our audience. Because again, remember, a public speech, the purpose of a public speech is usually to persuade your audience to believe an idea or to take action on something you want them to do. And in order for them to want to believe your ideas or to do what you're suggesting they do, they need to trust you first. You, they, they need to feel a connection with you. They need to trust you. Much the same in a debate, for example, for our debating students. So this is this again can be a very important and a very good thing to add to your arsenal is to be able to control your facial expressions. Because if you can convey what you want to convey, if you come across as professional, knowledgeable, confident, uh, you're more likely to sway the judge's decision in your favor versus someone that's you know quite timid and not sure and looking around and very sketchy, then they're not, then the judges are going to have a hard time believing what you're saying. So you need to create a, you need trust to create a connection to cause believability. My goodness, I've still got people trying to set, people trying to make me laugh. What is that cat doing? Looks like it's just swallowed a canary. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I'm only teasing when I say this, but it looks like Luna snacking on whatever she's snacking on. Oh, oh. Okay. So um, I am going to give you your homework assignment in... <clears throat> So I'm going to give you your homework assignment in the uh, class Zalo group and same conditions as normal. It's due before class next Sunday if you wish to get the Zoom link to enter the class. Um, in our next lesson, we're going to be focusing on hand gestures. So your hands can actually be very animated. So whether you're trying to be serious or angry and trying to tell someone something or whether you're trying to be friendly and invite them in, whether you're trying to be respectful and offer a handshake, your hands can really communicate a lot. So yeah, your hands can really communicate a lot uh, with, your, with your audience. Not... That might not always be the case. It's still it's still a good idea, Tina, to at least know about hand gestures. Okay, so guys, thank you very much for your attention this evening. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you guys very much for this evening. It has been an absolute pleasure to run this class. Uh, <laughs> Actually, funny thing, um, the, the face that has been photoshopped onto this baby is actually Rowan Atkinson. Um, the stand-up comedian or the, the comedian that I suggest you suggested you check out. Um, <laughs> uh, because he's so good with facial expressions. Oh my gosh. Oh Lordy. Okay, guys. Um I've got to show one more, one more. Yeah, that's very good. That's Rowan Atkinson plays Mr. Bean. <laughs> Rowan Atkinson is the actor that plays Mr. Bean. <laughs> oh, my goodness. It looks like the panel of most morning talk shows, doesn't it? <laughs> Uh, oh my, oh oh no this poor kitty cat looks like he got looks like he got trapped in the washing machine in the dryer one too many times and now he's stuck like that <laughs> oh no uh well, Tom, whilst I appreciate, whilst I very much appreciate that, that kind of humour, I don't think it's appropriate for this class setting. Um, <laughs> why is a monkey about to beat a lion with a stick? Uh, okay, send the, send the jokes to me, Tom. And then if I think they're appropriate, I can share them with the class. <laughs> Are you guys just like all on the internet now looking for funny pictures to send me? Oh, don't mess with him. He gonna cut you, man. Deca Michael. Yes. Yeah, I think I th I th I think you guys are literally just trying to find funny photos now. <laughs> oh, there's a spider on the dog's head. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm just I'm 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 just getting meme bombed. Why are you guys doing this to me? Oh goodness. All right, hang on. I am going to return the favor. I'm gonna find one funny meme and then I'm gonna send one to you guys. I'm gonna send one to you guys to finish off the class tonight. Let's see what I can find and see if you guys think it's funny. <laughs> oh 
I think this I I I think this one is very topical. It's uh, it's actually a meme about uh, coronavirus, but I think that I think that for the topic of class tonight and the fact that we're doing an online uh, lesson, I think this is just perfect. Just imagine it says me and my students logging into our meetings remotely for the next couple of weeks and pulling all these funny facial expressions. <laughs> oh, bless. Ah, uh, oh, goodness. All right, so Michael just, uh, Michael from B and Hoa just sent me a joke. Uh, I'm gonna tell that, um, but I'm gonna add a slight little twist on it to try and trick you. So if you guys are all Vietnamese while you're in your bedroom and you're all Vietnamese while you're in the kitchen and you're also Vietnamese while you're in the living room watching television, what are you in the bathroom? European. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> oh lord okay guys uh so we're going to we're going to uh wrap it up there so yeah we're going to wrap it up now and it's been again an absolute